When you hear that music, you know it's time to speak. CPL, Caribbean Premier League. Well, the Republic Bank CPL continued at the weekend with two games. On Saturday, Ghana Amazon Warriors were winners over St. Lucia Kings by six wickets at the Darren Sami Stadium in Grosile to keep their perfect record intact with three wins from three matches. Meanwhile, the Falcons, they climbed to third following a two-wicket win over St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots on Sunday. Well, Gerard Morrisili has the recap of that encounter. St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots put into bat in this bottom of the table clash against Antigua and Barbuda Falcons in their final home match go. of the tournament. They were in a spot of bother to end the power play after losing Kyle Mears with a score in 36 for 3. That soon became 60 for 4 when Sri Lankan and Wenindu Hasaranga Lost Given. his wicket for 23, caught and behind off the bowling of Fabian Allen. Mikhail Louis, the only condition in the sight of matters into Mikhail his Louis own hands to, to the rescue the innings for the Patriots. He blasted nine boundaries in his 36 ball, 63, Huge. two fours, and seven sixes. The Patriots posted 153 for eight of their 20 overs. Brandon King back in action after recovering from an injury sustained at the T20 World King Cup, the trap. making the his presence so felt really early. Get it. He and Justin Graves put on 55 for the first wicket, adding 29 before King being struck in front yes, by Anrik Norkia. Norkia. That sparked a massive five-wicket collapse headed by Hasaranga, who finished with four for 16. By the 19th over, the Falcons were biting their nails when Rashawn Primus, it's demoted to number 10, was outcaught for 15 of 11. Still 40 runs away from victory. But they eventually got over the line Just with the help of Fabian Allen's 13 off seven deliveries to win their second consecutive match by two wickets. Back -back the table now looks much different following that result. The Falcons are now third behind Barbados Royals on four points, with Guyana Amazon Warriors on top with six. St. Lucia Kings, who led heading into the weekend, are now fourth after losing to the Warriors. Trinbago Knight Riders are fifth with two points, while the Patriots are at the foot with five losses. Time to hear from the captains. Uh, to be honest, it was a difficult wicket uh, to start with. And um, yes, they peg us back early, but the way Asaranga, Mikel Louis, and, and the guys played to, to bring us back in it, um, with that fight in total, I couldn't ask for anything better. Well, I learned that we like winning in the last over. Um, you know, I think w this this group, I've got to credit this group, our vibe throughout. We've been getting on really well as a unit. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun uh, as a playing group on and off the field. And I think when you're enjoying each other's company, that helps you be set up to, to be successful uh, after a tough run at home. Yeah, two exciting matches. I don't know where to start, but we had to call on Nikhil Utam Chandani. He's here with us. He's been working on the CPL. Nikhil, good afternoon. Welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Thanks very much, Maya. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I mean, I'm so happy for the teams, Ghana Amazon Warriors, getting the win. You know, uh, making that statement that they're here to defend their title and doing so in style. Yeah, Maria, it was real, a real dominant performance for them to go into St. Lucia. Um, you know, in the first home game for the Kings and for them to be blown away in the manner that in which they were. I think the 100 all out is a serious statement. I think it's a testament to how strong that Guyanese bowling lineup is. And then the manner in which they were they chased the runs, 11 sixes in that run chase. And I think Gorbaz has been such a solid pickup for them overseas wise. And I mean, Tim Robinson, who they've got as a temporary replacement, looked quite good as well. And then we know the strength of, of their other overseas in Pretorius, Tahir meshed in with them their local players they're they're a force yeah what would the kings be thinking now as they get ready to complete the rest of their matches because you spoke about the batting 100 all out you know it's worrying yeah it is um i think definitely they're batting from last season there's always been some inconsistencies you think back to the playoffs last year where they they really struggled to put competitive totals when batting first against quality opposition it was the amazon warriors last year in the playoffs as well um, so that is a slight problem for Faf. I think Faf himself has got a, a decision to make because he's someone that usually is quite explosive in the power play. But he also re recognized that, you know, they may have to, the openers in, in Johnson, Charles and Faf, because of their importance, may have to actually, you know, sit back a bit and actually stay there and try to get a start. Because 
that batting the middle without a class in and with the, the inexperience of some of the guys in there, I think they could be a bit susceptible to, to these collapses. So it's going to take some of those more experienced guys like a Fafa, Charles, a Raja Paxa maybe to really make sure they're getting deep. I think Ross and Chase, their best success from him has been when he's batted at number three. We haven't seen him there yet uh, for the season. So maybe that's something that they can think about. But definitely they'll try to avoid the collapses. And I think their fast bowling in St. Lucia needs to also probably improve a bit as well. Yeah, hoping that, of course, they can work on those areas. Now, the Antigua and Barbuda Falcons, they're back to winning ways. I mean, it's just two wins so far, but they're looking pretty good. And, of course, you made the point on Friday's show, I believe, about Brandon King and how much they missed Brandon King. He's back and they continue to win. Yeah, they lost fuckers a man um, for that last game, which is a very big loss, in my opinion. But then to get Brandon King in, I thought you saw the value. When you look back on that game, for me, that power play batting-wise for the Falcons is what won them the game because you had to maximize that hard new ball, which Brandon King and Justin Graves did really well. And from there, it was just a runner ball. And even on a tough surface, whilst it looked quite dicey at times, they've got such a deep batting lineup and bowling lineup, I would say, with the likes of Shamar Springer and Roshan Primus not bowling a ball in that game. They only used the one seamer. I think that depth really will help them in their playoff quests. And it's probably uh, a point of, of difference when you think about them compared to some of the other teams. So yeah, a really strong lineup. And I think I can attest to Chris Green what he's saying there about the chemistry that they have in that group. Because for example, I travel with them today. You see them around the hotel, all the guys, they're really close. And even the overseas guys, Amir, Imad Wazim, Green, because they've spent so many seasons with the Talawas, I think they know the core group of local guys really well, and I think that is showing on the field in, in the tough moments. Yeah, Nikhil, I just want to go back quickly to the Ghana Amazon Warriors because you just said a few minutes ago, well, you, you referenced based on your rating of their roster just how strong the, the, the team is. And um, someone told me about half an hour ago that the signing of Moeen Ali, the outstanding Englishman who has retired from in, international cricket, that they, they're so good they probably don't even need him. Yeah, um, Lance, to be honest, Azam Khan, I was trying to look at it yesterday. Obviously, you only have five games where you can play your five overseas players. So when Moin does come in and Gorbaz comes back from the South Africa series, someone like an Azam Khan may have to miss out. And he's someone that's had, you know, three really good seasons of the CPL. So they are a really strong team. I think the batting speaks for itself. Hetmeyer looks different this year. And I'll also say their bowling lineup, I think, is so adaptable with the two spinners in Moti and Tahir. Pretorius who can swing the ball and then you've got the extra pace of Joseph and I mean they're winning without Romario Shepard so that I think speaks to how strong they really are. Yeah and you just uh, spoke about the the Falcons and and how how gelled they appear to be. Um, how much are you reading into these two back-to-back -back wins for them? Uh, a lot Lance. I think the TKR win was a big one for me because I thought they didn't have enough runs on the board and for them to win a game like that um, I thought it was a huge statement for their team specifically, not the rest of the league, but just to give them the confidence that, look, we can beat the best teams in this tournament. And what we saw in the Patriots game, I keep saying it, the depth. For Primus to walk in at number 10, um, they, they only have one tail end, I would say, and that's Mohamed Amir batting at number 11. So teams will have to be quite aware of that, that, you know, even if you get a three or four early wickets, they've got enough batting pedigree that they can come back into games and win them. So... That depth for me, I think, makes them a real playoff contender. And teams like the Patriots and Kings have to be very careful because the Falcons, who many would have thought after the first four games, would be one that would not qualify. For me now, I think they've found something. I think they, they could easily find themselves in that top four. Yeah, well, the Pakistani Imad Wasim, he's been quite instrumental for the Falcons and he was good again yesterday. A 13 ball, 17 not out and 2 for 24. And of course, those performances earned him the player of the match. And Nikhil, you had a chat with him. Let's have a look. Me. Uh, but the but the thing is, you just uh, stay in, and uh, my number is really good, really crucial. Number four, number five. Today I batted number eight because of uh, my injury. But uh, I think number four, number five, you can take the game deep, play the spinner well, and then at the end you can accelerate so you can score runs. Yeah, you know, Nikhil, I really do believe that the Falcons will be extremely disappointed if they don't get into the playoffs because you look at the team. You spoke about the depth that they have. Two players, the player of the match from yesterday, um, Iman Wazim, and then for me as well, Fabian Allen, because of how he can impact the game um, in different areas, whether with the bat, the ball, or in the field. And when you have match winners like that, 
you expect to go deep in a tournament like this? I think, yeah, Ricardo, it's right across the board. Obviously, the two of them, because they're all-rounders, play a huge part. But I would even say someone like Mohamed Amir has been a, a match winner in this CPL for a number of seasons. When this Talawas team won in 2022, he was a big reason why. And I think someone like a Chris Green, I, Brandon King, as we know, when they won in 2022, he was the leading run score for them. So the match winners, they've got a lot of them. And they've got guys who know how to win the CPL. So you look at that table there, they could have easily been four wins, two losses. How many last ball you know, finishes did they end up losing? And it, the fact that they've been able to do that and still bounce back and find this form now speaks volumes. You look at someone like Sam Billings, hasn't fired yet. Chris Green probably hasn't been at his best just yet. So they've got guys... Um, who have really complemented the group. I think the locals in Graves and Shamar Springer specifically, Primus with under pressure, you saw in the last game with Bat against TKR holding his nerve with ball. It's a really nice mix and combination that they found and teams have to be careful because they have got serious power in that batting lineup and they've got a lot of options when it comes to their bowling. All right, well, it's now that time for the play of the day brought to you by Angostura. Out towards the slightly shorter side. And now the Falcons are in prime position. They need five from the last four. All right, so I'm being told by my producer that the moment is that he was able to bring the game from 11 to five. Yeah. And I mean, that's their play of the day, but I feel like I saw so many other things you, on the weekend. You, you know, it's interesting, right? And I'm not disagreeing with our producers for disagreeing sake here, but I, I, that's not the one I would have picked. Even going along the same line of reasoning, Lance and Mariah and Nikhil, I would have gone with Russian Primus when he just came to the crease. Hasaranga had taken four for six at that stage, um, and it looked as if um, the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots could win the game and Primus hit him sweeping over backward square for six and then followed that with a four. I would have gone with one of those because I, I feel as if that Russian Primus, um, in fact, Darren Ganga um, on commentary had critiqued the shot suggesting that maybe you need to block Hasaranga out um, because he was the best bowler to that point. That's where I would have gone. Yeah, Nikhil agrees. He, he was brave, for sure. He was brave. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's spot on, Ricardo. Um, as soon as I saw that, I thought about that same moment as well. The six, because I think the six, you could even see Hasaranga. And Primus told me after the game, Hasaranga said he's never seen someone flat sweep him like that. So it was <laughs> amazing to see those 10 runs and two balls could have been the difference in the entire game. I think massively, yeah, a huge moment. I think we're going to have to fire the panel that, that comes up with these picks. What do you think, No, but Nikhil? I'll still say the Fabian Allen one was a top shot, you know. That's hitting into the wind under Nikhil, serious Nikhil, pressure you, in the last you, over. You can't so. have it both ways. It's, it's one no, or just, the other. I, I, listen, I like my producers. They hire me, so please <laughs> stick with them. <laughs> All right, Nikhil. Well, some good fun here. We want to thank you so much. Uh, good luck in the match tomorrow, and we'll talk again really soon. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, Nikhil Utam Chandani there. He's our cricket uh, prediction guru and, of course, gives us some of the best analysis here on the Sports Max Zone. Taking a quick break. No more jokes, Ricardo. Okay. We'll be back. Every preacher, every fan, every leader, every wicked, every soul. Every art, every soul, and passion, and the culture.